Hey YouTube, it's your gal, it's your pal, it's Lambie. And uh we're getting right into a an exciting episode today. We we're gonna get started on on uh on Valhalla finally. Oh let me get Scare cam going. Hi. Um. Yeah. Let's get into to Valhalla, shall we? Cause it's time to time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, you get me a beer. Oh, sure, right on it. Uh, he wants a beer. He looks like quite the big guy, though. So look at that. It's our first, uh... It's our first moral dilemma in this game. Because we could... Could make this guy... One... Beer. Or... We could make him a beer... And just max out the alcohol. Or... We could... Make him a big beer. Look at that. He's gonna like that, right? Uh, serve. Look at that. He loved it. Here you go. Yeah, this one's good. Pretty good, in fact. Nice job. Uh, thanks, I guess. You're lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a presence like mine. Although, to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes. Like New Jersey 3. Such kind of a Morty voice. <laughs> huh. What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. I I swear I'm usually better. At... Uh, excuse me. And that's another tie-in to our snack of the day. You gotta get the brand in frame. It's applesauce. Applesauce brand applesauce. What, what's what's Morty? Oh, jeez, Rick. No, I don't got it today. Sorry. The day started with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then. Hey, people love these articles. They love reading about that urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wild card hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's. That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks, from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars, and houses, and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact you write about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all, I don't write about it, my interns do. What poor bastards think it'll help make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a supposed hacker, but not all the daily stories about murders and other horrors? Well, I always filter out that section. Sorry, I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lovely citizens to the list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt from the lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get distant distances. People get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. 
when I started in this job. Oh, you know what voice he needs actually is um. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. When I started on this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. That's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about, and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot, and even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories, will see them. That brings money, and like I said, money's good. Huh, I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> Aren't those a good source of traffic, too? Oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes... playing on both of them. That's weird. Oh yeah, what time is it? Should I be quiet? No. Okay. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. Oh my goodness. The worst part about that is they know half of our clips come from them, so they get all diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about... No, wait, I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column. Uh, shit. Forgot that brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid. Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Wasn't this one then? Anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Beer again. This man likes his beers. They come che cheaper in bulk at the store, though. So this time, let's say we just make it a real strong one, yeah? I can just max that shit out. You're supposed to be able to do that. They mentioned it in the tutorial. Am I doing the wrong thing? It is Karma Train, right? Is it just that you can double it? No. Well, fuck me for trying to have fun with this. We're just giving him another big one, okay? Serve. Look at that. That's how you get the big bucks, YouTube. Here. That's uh, the big things that make life worthwhile. What about big troubles? Huh? Did I stutter, kid? Right. So tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. Who was that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that. Don't be offended by what I say, kid salt in the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole in hell, rather a... 
rather than a hellish hole if you like. Charming. So, celebrities. Not really, at least not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people, especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks people pretend to love, but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? Why do you think that gossip about the famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but what they really want is to see their idols torn down to their level. How we doing? Ten minutes already, gosh dang. They want to see them suffer, to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. Now I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. You thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They wouldn't escape their lives by living someone else's. Sadly, I failed to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals, or if they're dating gosh knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is practically a public indecency, but still. Oh please, as a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers, this sounds hypocritical coming from you. E even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crab just wants to see their human. Hey, that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, brat? Well, two can play at that game of... Hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat. Hell-bent on world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe, why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories, and then got excommunicated and lynched. Oh my goodness. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting. Half of our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Anyway. Eventually, the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. D did I say something wrong? Not at all, I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Doth and our boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. It is? Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too general. But Mr. Donovan, now that's more like it. They're referring to me, not to the man in front of him. 
Not to my family, not to my position as boss, to me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, gods, no. But I want them to fear me, not because I'm their boss or the name appearing in their paychecks, but rather because I strike mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh, yes, you were asking me something. What was it? Drink. Another one. Do you? <laughs> Ah, yes, yes. You know what? Third time's the charm. Give me a beer. Alright. Third time's the charm? For, for what? Anyway, better get him that beer. 